Hello, and thank you for your interest in the Animal Funding Atlas, which is a new grants mapping tool designed to facilitate collaboration and enable strategic grant making for animal related funders. My name is Che Green, and I'm with an organization called Faunalytics, and we are managing the development process as well as the grants and the data management. Also involved in the project and the ones that really are making the Animal Funding Atlas possible are the Summer Leaf Foundation, which initiated the project, the ASPCA, Tigers in America, and Maddie's Fund. My goal today in this video is to give you just a brief overview of the history of the Animal Funding Atlas. I will also have two separate videos, one showing the basic features and functions of the atlas, and another walking through three short scenarios to show you how to use the Animal Funding Atlas in your work with animal-related grants. First, a brief history of the Animal Funding Atlas. As I mentioned, it was initiated back in 1999 by the Summerleaf Foundation. It was an offline access database managed at the time by Christy Wicker. It was a very useful tool, but it was being offline. It was difficult for many people to access. And so we looked over the years at how to take it online. And in the interim years, we partnered with the Foundation Center initially with Found Philanthropy Insight and then with Foundation Center Maps. And those were useful tools that allowed the, the database and the map to be online and to be accessible by animal grant makers and others. But it wasn't quite detailed or granular enough to be useful for, to be as useful as it could be for animal related funders specifically. And that was the impetus for the four organizations that I just mentioned, pooling their resources and creating what we're calling the Animal Funding Atlas in 2018. In terms of where we are right now, the Animal Funding Atlas is in what we're calling private beta, and we are very much actively seeking grant contributors, and I'll have more on that in a moment. We are also considering whether or not to make the tool public facing eventually so that it could be used by grant seekers as well as grant makers, but that's a decision that is still pending. In terms of the composition of the Atlas, we currently have just over 17,000 grants and those have gone to just under 7,000 recipients. And that works out to about 2.5 grants per recipient. The Atlas includes just over half a billion dollars in funding, 510 million, and that has been contributed by just 51 funders. That averages out to about $10 million per funder. The green columns that you see on the bottom represent rough volume of grants by year. So you see some concentration in the early years where we ported over grants from the database created by the Summerlee Foundation. The original Summerlee database ended in 2009. So the grants you see from 2005 to 2009 include all 51 funders but the grants after 2009 only include the four funders who created the Animal Funding Atlas. We're still working to add more grants for recent years and hope to have your participation. More on that in a minute. What you will see in the Animal Funding Atlas now, therefore, largely reflects the types of projects and grants made by the four key funders who have created the Animal Funding Atlas. And that means a, a fairly large concentration on companion animals, with specifically dogs and cats receiving the vast majority of grants by species. That second tier includes wildlife in a variety of different forms. And lumped together in the third tier would be farmed animals as well as animals used in science, in laboratories and dissection. When it comes to project type, Spay and neuter is the most commonly funded project subcategory. While the top level animal care category actually gets more funding, it also includes more subcategories. When you look at the more granular project types, spay and neuter really stands out, followed at a somewhat distant second by two types of funding. One is uh, specifically veterinary medicine, and so providing veterinary services in clinics, and another is veterinary science, so looking at science from a university perspective. In that third tier is a lot of student-related programs, as well as sheltering and feeding and capacity building programs, so facilities and equipment. 
And again, these are largely reflective of the four funders, and I expect that the species and project types will diversify over time as we get more funders in here. And while I'm only touching on a few of the, the major species and projects, I should note that we developed a classification system that includes over 90 different species categories and 60 different project types. And that's specifically because the Animal Funding Atlas was developed with the entire animal protection field in mind, including a detailed taxonomy that's uniquely suited to animal-related funders and grantees. Our goal is to create a system that can be used to improve your knowledge of the field, including what projects are being funded and where, what opportunities exist for collaboration, where there are possible funding gaps, and how funders and grantees can both be more strategic in their planning. Perhaps not surprisingly, the value of the Animal Funding Atlas increases as participation increases. And so every step closer that we get to having to representing the full universe of animal related grants makes the atlas that much more useful. And so we are hoping that as many animal related funders will participate as possible, and we are willing to do some hand holding to facilitate that. So if you have even a casual interest in participating in the Atlas, what we will do is we will add five grants to the system on your behalf. We will apply the detailed taxonomy that we have created to your grants and show them in context in the Atlas. We will have a phone call with you to walk through what we've done and to talk about how the rest of your grants can be ported to the Atlas with assistance. And then we will also give you temporary access to the Atlas itself to see your grants in the system and in contact, and also play around with the tool, at least on a temporary basis. And then if you'd like to move forward, we are willing to add up to 45 more grants into the system for you. For small funders, this may be your entire grant portfolio. For larger funders, this may only represent a small subset, but we hope that we'll provide an example or a set of examples for you to be able to then more easily add your grant to the Atlas in the future. So all of this begins with a phone call or an email to me, and I hope that you'll reach out to me soon. And we will do as much as we can to help you get your, your animal-related grants into the system. Please be sure to check out the other two videos that I will be creating. One is an overview of the Animal Funding Atlas, and the second is a set of three scenarios that walk through typical types of usage of the, the Atlas and how you might be able to apply it to your grant making for animals. Thanks so much for your attention.